Now, tell me about this. This is this iconic signature guitar that you've been playing for quite some time. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, I've been playing Sky Guitars since um, the 80s, early 80s. And um, there were only like five originals. They were all prototypes, including the first ever seven string. And um, then I played these for many years, uh, but a lot of people actually copied them you know, without my permission. And they were usually very bad copies because all they had to go by were, were photos. And um, that is, uh, it's a very difficult guitar to build uh, for several reasons. And um, so a good friend of mine, uh, the CEO of, of Teen Guitars, Elliot Rubinson, actually persuaded me to make a signature series. And at first I was a little hes hesitant because it's, a, it's just so personal to me. But then I thought that um, the advantage would be, first of all, other people would be able, I, it would be shared with other people, but uh, we would be able to build prototypes and, and um, you know, make uh, further progress. So that's what we did. In the end, um, we had a limited edition of 50. Uh, which were just sold now, so we are going to do um, a new edition, which will be slightly different. But um, the Sky Guitar came about because um, I was traditionally a, a Strat player um, in the Scorpions, and uh, I had a beautiful white Strat, which I still have, um, 1975 model. Um, but when I was playing uh, leads, um, increasingly I had the urge to play a little higher mm -hmm. than, than you could on the Strat because the Strat stops on the C sharp. Wow. <laughs> I don't even have cotton wool in my ear right now. Um, it stops on the on that note and um, I wanted to go like, like here, you know, and I couldn't. So um, the first idea I had was to extend the Strat. So my guitar builder Andy Dimitrio in Brighton at that time, um, he actually put two extra frets onto the Strat. So I had two extra frets mm. and uh, then I was able to play two notes higher, which I did and, and it was great. Uh, he did a great job and then he said, look, I can build you any guitar you like. And then it clicked. Uh, that was the first moment where I actually had the idea to even think about my own guitar because before uh, that, that was inconceivable, you know. And then that set a whole thing in motion, uh, because then I really thought about what I wanted. I wanted really a guitar which was, had everything the Strat, Strat had, sound-wise um, and playing-wise, but more. I also wanted a little bit of a hybrid, because I love the sound of the Les Paul, mm -hmm. um, which is a completely different animal to the Strat. You know, the Strat to me is always like a pencil drawing, very crystal clear, but essentially hard. Whereas the Les Paul is very feminine, soft, and um, and creamy sounding, you know, uh, rich sounding, and I wanted both, and um, that was another thing. Anyways, uh, to get the extended uh, range, um, I had to come up with a shape that allowed that, and away went the lower cutaway. That's the first thing, but I also wanted a guitar that was visually pleasing and balanced. You know, and so this guitar is um, has its own kind of symmetry. It's not perfectly symmetrical, but it feels symmetrical, and to me that was very, very important. So I ended up with all these frets going, going up here, and um, the first guy guitar, the frets just kept getting smaller and smaller, and there were I think 36 of them, which meant like with normal fingers it became very hard to make these notes sound right. And um, so I had the idea to have whole tone steps at the, at the top, oh. you know. <coughs> yes? Uh, and that worked great because I can get like an amazing sound. Plug your ears. Right here, right. which you would never get. Uh, if, if they were not uh, spaced like whole tone steps. The only downside is you don't have any semitones, you know. Um, so the semitones I'm creating but crisscrossing the string, yeah? Mm. 
it's a little uncomfortable, but then here in the top range, I don't play these virtuoso runs normally. It's more to really be able to go, go up into the sky and, and fly, you know? So I play, tend to play more slowly up there, except for if I play some classical pieces which are more demanding, you know? Like the Vivaldi stuff. Anyway, so that's the idea. And also that's where the scalloping came from because I needed to be able to pick without hitting the, um, the fingerboard. Oh. So I thought, let's do that. I had seen Richie Blackmore do that, but, and I had never tried it, and I liked it a lot. So from then on, all my guitars became scallop because um, to me it feels better and it sounds better even, you know. Some people might disagree, but I hear a very clear uh, difference in sound. It's just more singing um, because you're, um, I, I think there's various reasons for that. So that's that, you know, and that's why they are called sky guitar, because you can play so high. And some of them have a seventh string, and this one is just a sixth string. Um, <clears throat> then the other thing that we needed was uh, a pickup system that could, could deliver this uh, outrageous kind of um, freedom that I wanted. I wanted to be able, at the flick of a knob, to dial in a uh, superb, like Les Paul tone, or a real strat tone or something in between, you know? And with this system, I can do that. And let me explain. It was designed by my good friend um, and electronic, electronic genius, John Orham from England, who made his name mm, designing big mixing consoles, like the old Trident mixing boards, etc. And so he had, he had superb ear and, take, uh, and the right kind of knowledge about the analog electronics. You know, so this is an active system, and it is so powerful, it's easily the most powerful in the world. Um, that's why we have an 18-volt power supply. I could run it on batteries, but uh, it only lasts a few hours, and, uh, you know, uh, then to me, that's not a big deal. I have the power supply, so... So, so the power supply, so it's sending, uh, it's, it's sending phantom power through, through Yes, uh, and I have a stereo lead. So the st it comes through the stereo lead, and uh, half of that lead uh, creates the sound, and the other is just the power, oh. you know? And, um, yeah. And that allows you to have these, these active controls on Active well? controls and lights, you know, I've got lights everywhere. Oh, that's great. Uh, which is absolutely necessary, because um, I don't see a thing when I play anymore. I used to have great eyesight, but now when I look down without glasses, in the dark, you know, it's just, or even when there's like um, big stage lights, it's just a big blur. Sure. You know, so I normally, I tend to just use the force. Most <laughs> of the time I get away with it, but with these lights, it helps when you're playing something tricky. You immediately yeah. know your position, you know, and, and I love it. And I can dim them, I can dim them at the back, although I tend to have them quite strong always. I like the glare. Sure. Uh, whenever that's on, it feels like, yeah, we've got something, you know, there we're ready to, to roll, yeah. So that's the power supply, and these electronics are pretty outrageous because, uh, first of all, when I asked John to design these pickups or that entire system, which uh, we aptly called Mega Wing, because initially it had four coils for each pickup, um, he said, "Oh well, that can't be done." And he's the person who would never say that can't be done. You know, he said, "Don't even go there." But I kept nagging him, and three days later he came up with an idea. So anyway, to get a long story short, what this guitar does, see this is a perfectly clean sound, but I've got like a huge dB uh, gain boost here. No other guitar can do that uh, because I'm playing on the clean channel on one at the moment, on a hundred watt amp. Wow! You know, yes, without so, without any effects so except all that for the dirt echo. Is through generated yeah, through that is there. this is just this, um, but that's just the beginning, because I've got three other knobs here, and each one gives me another 20 dB boost of my favorite frequency range. I've got a bass boost here, you know, um, which I can take out 20 dB and I can bring into it. 
-hmm. And I'm using that a lot on stage because every stage is different. And I'm constantly re EQing the guitar uh, to the point of where it sounds perfect for me. Every day it's different, and that's why I don't have any signs. I couldn't see it anyway. I just do it by ear and feel. Um, so everything is very, um, yeah, it's almost floating on this guitar, you know. Yes, nothing is really set. Everything is like free, and you, you do it just by ear. Then I've got a very powerful mid-boost, which um, pretty much is almost like a wah-wah, wah -wah, but not as brutal. Um, and it does this. Again, 20 dB. That's out. Get like a Strat sound. If you want less Paul. Or if I take it out, then you get like a telly kind of sound. If I want the Strat, I go to the single coil, um, dial in a few more things. A little bit of treble, a little bit of mid, a little bit of bass, take out, roll off some of that, and you have a beautiful. Yeah, and I can. So you can do pretty much anything. Wow! You know, um, well, it, you gets, it gets better. It gets better <laughs> because um, we developed uh, this guitar builder, Boris Dominger. He came up with an amazing idea. So, because I said, you know, because the magnetic field of the pickups of the Strat are totally different from the mag magnetic field from the Les Paul. Um, you know, one is very crystal clear, the Strat. The Les Paul is more fuzzy, like um, a P90 or, so, or something like that. I can do both here because um, this changes the um, magnetic field. And so when I go into humbucking, it really goes into real humbucking mode and single coil is real single coil. You know? And again, this is so important for me because I'm using it all the time. And I love playing with all these colors during the gig, particularly during the improvised parts. You know, um, during a, a normal guitar lead, I wouldn't really fiddle so much, although I use the gain in order to just bring it up and down. Um, but yeah, so that's those are like the you know the most important things. And this there's actually a pickup underneath here, and that's very important to get that uh, really you know warm. get that kind of tone I wouldn't get that with the other pickups you know um, and yeah anyway so that's that's pretty much that that system